Hi hey everyone, it's Jill Lancet, uh, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Australia. Actually in Greystains, New South Wales, a suburb of uh, Sydney, out towards the western uh, suburbs. Um, now I cannot still show you what's inside this mini catalogue. Yeah, I know that's a bit of a tease, but... Anyway, I've seen some beautiful things in here and I've got some of the beautiful items I just can't show you yet until it's been released. And that will be uh, on the 5th of January. Look at that. <gasps> Look at that. Beautiful. Um, okay. Torment over. A um, bit of business out of the way. Uh, so here is my online store, jilllancet.stampinup.com. Dot net. That's my email address if you need to contact me. Um, once you go into my store, though, all of those contact details are in there. There's my Facebook, my Pinterest, all, all of that stuff. Um, you can also sign, you know, join up to my um, YouTube, uh, so subscribe to my YouTube, and also to my uh, Facebook page. So there you go. It's all there. Um, all you need to do is look for it <clears throat> okay but i can't show you what's inside the catalog but i can show you some products from the catalog this is really exciting this is a collection and it's called oh gosh what's it called maybe sentimental park hmm, let me have a look i can't show you but i can have a look <clears throat> probably should have oh, look i don't know Maybe Sentimental Park, but you get, I think it's actually Regent, Regent's Park, but you get a whole pile of stuff in this collection. Um, there's the fabulous um, six by Regency Park, that's what it's called, Regency Park. Um, six by six uh, designer series paper, and there's 48 pieces. Look, I have, I've, I've taken one sheet out one sheet and it was that one sorry about the glare but you get that pack of 48 sheets that's lovely you get this beautiful 3d embossing folder now i did post on my facebook page the other day a little quick little christmas card and there's a little peek of that on one of the tags it's beautiful it looks like basket weave it's just so lovely um so that's there. You've got also the um, the dies, and they coordinate beautifully with the two, I said, two stamp sets. Look how beautiful that is. There's so much variety here. This one's got all these um, sentiments on there that are going to come in very, very useful. This one just has the flowers that fit in. You can cut them out with either the die or the punch. So I've 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 got to make a card. I thought let's make a, a video while we're at it. I'll use this beautiful new set. And um, you can see I haven't made this card yet, but you can, you'll be able to see the process that goes in with it. Now if you do place an order um, using use this um, Post code if your order is under two hundred and fifty dollars. Now at the moment, until until the fourth of January, we have our last chance products uh, sale, which is most of the items from the last mini catalogue, which I don't seem to have here because I am extremely disorganised. Um, and we've also got some great things in the clearance sale which i'm actually going to use some beautiful gems from that um are these beautiful gems because these are the basic uh the rhinestone waves basic jewels and these were designed to go with that beautiful oceanic paper but they're going to go with this today so yeah you'll see how my thought process puts these things together now I have done some stuff I'm going to pop this stuff away and I'm going to show you what I've done now I'm I like to make uh, personalized cards and a lot of people like the other day I posted one a personalized and somebody commented on there and said didn't even know you could do that 
didn't even know you could print them. So this is how my process works, okay? So I print my message just on a piece of ordinary paper. I print it. I keep the message on my computer screen and I just pop a scrap. Now I've put some um, double-sided tape, you know, some tape runner, what do you call it? Stamp and seal on there. I've taken most of the stickiness out by doing that. And then I just pop this on here over it. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Um, and I hold that up to the computer screen so I can see where the message is. So I'm roughly putting my... <coughs> Excuse me again. It's been crazy weather here in Sydney. One day it's hot, one day it's freezing cold. We're back to freezing cold today. So if I do that again, I'm so sorry. Um, so I've got my little sticky-sided stamp and seal there. I place this on. I check to see through the light on the computer screen that I'm putting that in the right place. And making sure that my scrap of paper is in, in the defines of the A4 paper, I put it in exactly the way it printed the first time, back into my computer um, printer feed, and run it, print it again, and it will print on there. So I've got my little scrap here. I don't need this anymore. I usually put that in my scrap paper drawer. So off camera, I've done some things. Now look at this beautiful, beautiful die that comes in um, the die set, wherever I put it. Don't know. Had it two seconds ago. Good grief. That's how things run around here. No, that's not it. But this is the story of my life. Oh, here it is. Oh, goodness. Dear, oh dear. Please. It's very early in the morning here, I might add. But you get these three kind of like labels in this set. You've got a small one. You've got this one. And this one, incidentally, will fit inside there. And I'm going to show you how. I had a little bit of a play with it this morning. I cut it out. And I'm going to show you how that's going to come together. So, yeah. So that's that new uh, Regent's Park. So I've cut this out. And I just wanted to show you how beautifully this cuts it out. Now, I'm going to just... I left some of it to be poked out. So bear with me while I just get something to poke these out with. It puts a little bit of an indentation on, on the flowers as well. So these just pop out. The die just cuts it so beautifully. So just bear with me. I'll just pop all these out and then we'll do some more die cutting and we'll do some um, punching. Sorry, this is not my take your pick tool because I took it to class the other day and it's still in the bag. Ugh. I think I use that excuse far too often, but it's true. <laughs> anyway, so that's all the bits and pieces out of the way. And we've got this beautiful, it's like a little frame. So I've printed my message. I've got my scrap out of the way. I've got my die out of the way. Now I'm going to use this die and I use um, just a little bit of removable tape. It's already low tack. So what I want to do is just, and just bear with me because the camera is right here and I might bump it. So I just want to make that reasonably straight. Now you could use a ruler. You could use your grid lines on your page to make sure that that's straight. And I'll show you how I do that. So I'm, I'm lining up this grid with this grid. I'm lining that up so it's straight. And then I want to line this up so it looks straight. And the good thing about having a clear ruler is you can see what you're doing. Um, yep, so we'll just move that out of the way. Just pop that on there. Because it didn't print straight. It didn't print 100% straight. But that's what happens, okay? And yes, I'm talking to myself. 
Okay, so I want to run that through my mini, my little mini Bertha. I have got my mats here. This is just my silicon craft mat. Opens up like that. You need your uh, white plate number one. You need your cutting plate number two. And you need another cutting plate number two. Now, they're all numbered. Um, it shows you on your base uh, plate what you need. But everything you need is in your... Um, pack when you get that. Now this is a bit too wide so I've just got to cut that down. So I'm just going to cut it like that so I can fit it through. And this is really good to use up scraps with. Um, so on to one cutting board. Now what I do is I try to keep one plate unscratched by the cutting blade. This one you'll see is very, very scribbly, very, very cut up from the dies. So I always try to keep one not cut up. And if you ever have any trouble feeding this sandwich, which is what it's called, through the die cutting machine, just stag them a little bit. <clears throat> and by that I mean just have a little gap between so I'm going to run that through now. Probably make a lyre out of me. And the reason I've got my little silicon mat is so that it doesn't slip and slide all over this table. Because I've got some paper on there. And there we go. That's done. These two little doors close up. Fits very neatly on a shelf. And it's out of the way. And look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Right. Let's pop that up out of, there, out of the way. And now I can show you how this is going to fit inside this other die. Now that's just going to pop in there. It's like a little opening. But I'm going to do some stamping on this and some uh, put some, cut them out with the, the punch and add some flowers and things like that on there. But look at that. That's beautiful. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so we'll we'll get to that. I'm going to give you the measurements of everything that I've got so far. Now, this is for a customer of mine who buys an awful lot of cards. So I like to make a big card for her. So it's a five by seven, uh, five by seven card when it's folded, okay? I just buy these at my local craft store or the $2 shop, wherever I can get them. I then have some Knight of Navy, which is 15 centimetres by 10.8. So that's going to be our first mat. I have some Mango Melody, 14.5 by 9.5 centimetres. That's going on to there. And then this beautiful designer series paper from that new pack called Regency Park. Now, I don't know if you've never seen our packs of paper before, and excuse the glare if I put that on there, but it tells you the size. It tells you the colours that will coordinate. So always keep this handy with your paper. If you un unpack this, make sure you keep that piece handy with you. It is also written in our catalogues. Um, if you look up Regency Park in our catalogue, it will tell you the colours that go with it as well. But this is so good just to keep handy with your pack of paper. Okay, so this is how I envisage this kind of going. Okay, now I also have in that kit, in that collection was this gorgeous ribbon and it's called... Um, mm -mm -mm -mm, Bordered ribbon in Knight of Navy. So that's going to coordinate beautifully. So let's put this thing together and we'll see how we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've already mounted some stamps and I planned on um, using my bit of scrap to do that. So I want to stamp... And you'll notice these are all stuck together. And the good thing about that is they fit in the punch all together. 
So I'm just going to show you how that works. Okay, so I've got my Knight of Navy. Now I did accident I did actually print that in Knight of Navy. Now, if you'd like uh, a copy of the what they call or what do they call them? Hex codes, I think it is, for the colours that you can print on your printer, just let me know and I'll send that out to you by email or I could even pop that up on online somewhere. So I'm just thinking that up now. I'm just checking to make sure that that's all inked up. This is the first time I'm using these stamps and I did just give them a bit of a wipe like that. Just on the palm of my hand, um, there seems to be some sort of residue uh, when you get these and sometimes it does not allow the ink To stamp really well, but look how beautiful that stamped. Okay, so we know we're ready to go So I want to just make sure I'm putting this the right way around because I want to pop this in here like that So I need my little my little flower up the top like that Okay So, oh, oh, I need my stamping mat, but I don't know where it is. Hmm. I'll just use this. Oh, I'll just use my silicon mat, which is something else you can use it for. So I'll stamp that again. Ink that up again, I mean. Pop that on there like that. Now, before I cut that out, I'm going to colour it. Okay. And I also want to stamp out this little leaf. But I'll do that after I've cut these out so I know exactly where I'm, I'm going to be cutting it. So let's close that up before I lean into it. And we'll start with some Mango Melody. So I'm, I've just picked up the colours. I'm just going to pick up those colours in the center of these. So that's balmy blue. So I've got light and dark balmy blue there. I've got light and dark mango melody. I've stamped them in the Night of Navy to match that. So I think I'll just do the centers first. And so quick and easy. Um, I'll do the whole thing in light balmy blue first and then we'll go in and do some uh, shading with the dark look the, the stamp and blends are a very quick way of coloring um, the blends are very for forgiving in as far as um, you can blend very very easily and the Ink is like a water-based ink. The Knight of Navy ink pad is a water-based ink. So it does not um, make the, the stamp and blends smear because they're different different bases. These, these are alcohol. Uh, the stamp pad is like water-based. So I'm doing them all the same. I'm doing them all the same colour. And very quick, very quick colouring here. Um, and you'll see how we can shade with the darker colour and go back in and blend those two colours. So that was the light balmy blue. Here's the dark balmy blue. And I'm just going to just do a bit of this colour in the middle here. And it's, it's not rocket science, to be honest. Um... It's just a case of just making those darker. You'll see that Stampin' Up! have already put those lines there. They're guidelines for you to use. Now, I'm going back with the light balmy blue, and I'm just going to just kind of go over that. And what it does is it kind of, it kind of picks up the dark and spreads it out a bit. And look, these are not realistic flowers, so don't, don't worry too much, you know, you just get ulcers if you worry. So very, very simple. 
I mean, you needn't even do this. You could just leave them plain um, at the end of the day. It's your card. You do it the way you want to do it. So you'll see that the, the alcohol markers do actually go through to the back. So protect your surface. Don't do it on something you really want to keep. Now, I'm going to just line that up. Now, you can actually squeeze this a little bit and it will hold the paper before it cuts it. So normally I like to do that. Once I've got it where I think I want it, and I'm just, I'm just going to hold it sideways just so I can see it for a second. So I've got it where I want it. Now I'm, I'm holding that. That's, I'm just squeezing that very gently. It's not cutting it yet, but it's holding it in place so that I can use both hands to cut those out. So you'll see those three are cut out. Now I'm going to stamp my um, little leaf and I might do more than one. I'll just have to see. Um, I'm going to stamp that again in the Night of Navy. Um, and then I'm going to colour it. And that colour is actually shaded spruce. So I'm going to colour it with the shaded spruce. So we'll pop one there. Which way does this go? Let's have a look before we go to all the trouble of cutting it out. So they're going to be in the bottom and then I can turn it around. Yep, yeah, okay, that's good. It's always good to do that first. Beautiful. So we'll do one here. And I'll colour that first and then we'll see how I'm going to cut the rest of them out. So I'm using the light shaded spruce. And you'll see that that dried, that ink dried in pretty much no time. And I can go in and just Make that a little bit darker in the middle. Again, not totally lifelike. So let's see how that one goes. So I can... Oh, it didn't work out well, did it? There's one leaf there, okay. So, oops, a daisy. Let's get that right. And we'll do the other one on this end here in the same position. Again, in the night of navy and then color that with the light shaded spruce. Just a little line of the dark shaded spruce down the middle. And then just spread that out. Now, you can see this one here. The um, It actually looks like the leaf is kind of folding inwards. So that's, that's really why we would shade that. That's all. Pop that away. Don't need any more accidents today. And let's cut this one out now. So it does leave a bit of a border around, but um, that's good because it'll, it will um, make it stand out from the very busy background that we've got happening here with the paper. So let's get that out of the way. Oops, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay, all of that stuff's out of the way now. Let's put this thing together. And um, we're going to use some liquid glue. I am a liquid glue girl. And we're gonna use some uh, stamp dimensionals. I'll just have some here ready to go. And as I said, I haven't put this, I haven't, I've, I haven't got a plan. Okay, it's always good to not have a plan. So I want to glue these two together first. 
and I can see a little bit of pencil mark there where I've used that as a guide. So here's my liquid glue. I'm going to put the Mango Melody straight onto the um, Night of Navy. Oops, sorry, out of camera, sorry. And I'm really sorry, I haven't been able to um, make any videos lately. I just have had no time and I apologize for that. Um, it's a very busy time in my household. In fact, my husband has just gone over to pick up our granddaughter who we mind every Monday. And so I'm sneaking this in while they're, while they're on their way back. So I've got that there. Um, I'm, I'm going to put this beautiful ribbon on, but I want to wrap it around the whole finished thing. So I'm going to pop that on there now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you're not a liquid glue person, we've got our tape, our tape, and you really do only need a little tiny bit. Now, I know for the one time that I want it to be glary, you can see it there. Um, I, I'm not, I, I just like the fact that I can wriggle that around with the liquid glue. So that's why I predominantly use the liquid glue. But I'm getting better at using the tape. So sometimes you'll see me use it and sometimes you'll see me use the liquid glue. So because this stuff sticks and it sticks really, really well, um, what I do is I sort of hold this end up here at an angle and I like to line these three little sides up at this end before I press that down. Okay, so that looks like it's in the right spot to me. And there we go. Now I can press it down. Okay, so this pit is going to go up on dimensionals eventually when we get there. So I want to wrap my ribbon around here now. And I just need to sort of put and look and see what I'm going to do with these beautiful flowers and where I'm going to put the bow. Okay, so we might pop this on first. And then we can put everything else around it. So I'm going to actually um, liquid glue this because I might need to move it around. So just a bit of glue there. And you'll see that it just slides in there. And then you can just bend it up and pop it in underneath that little border there. How good is that? That is the first time I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm playing with it. And you've got this beautiful double stitched um, border now because it, it's on the Night of Navy as well as the white. Oh, it just looks so good. Um, now I might even do a little bit of stamping on there. I might stamp a bit of a flower there and a bit of a flower there. So we won't put that away yet. Let's have a look at that. We'll do them in the Night of Navy. We'll do a big, big flower. Do a big flower here. Just the edge of a big flower. And this is how things happen around here. You look at them and you go, yeah, no, I need something there. No, that needs something there. We might do, let me see, can we do one there? I think we can. And we might even do this little one there. And a little, little hint of another one there, I think. What do you think? Oh! Stamped over it. Never mind. We're going to colour it in. Don't panic. There's always a plan B. Always. Always a plan B. Okay. So now I will colour those in. 
So we'll do the light. Never, never panic. Don't throw it out. It'll be all right on the night. Nobody will know. Shh. And we'll probably stick one of these flowers over it anyway. So we'll go the dark. Oops, wrong end. Put a bit of the dark in there. Bit of the dark in there. Okay. And then just blend them out. It's just that quick. It's really, really quick. Okay. Oh, and the Mango Melody. Dark Mango Melody. Now, I've coloured those, but, you know, as I said... We most probably will end up putting something over that. <coughs> so we'll see how we go. Now I'm going to close this so I don't, you know, I'm sure you've been there. Okay, let's have a look here. I think we might pop that up like that and put the bow here. Yep, okay. So I'm just going to put some of our Stamp and Seal Plus on the back here. And that is just to catch that ribbon when I put the ribbon across. It's going to go about there. So I just tuck it in like that. And just cut that off there. That looks about even to me. Okay. Now I can pop this up on the card front, make sure you've got it going the right way. So we'll put some dimensionals on here. Um, I maybe put more than the average person, I don't know, but I like them to be secure. Catch that ribbon in as well with with uh, the dimensional. Oops, that doesn't want to come off. Uh, this is only paper, so, you know, it's not like it's going to weigh a ton or anything. These things are really, really light, and, um, yeah, they're not going to add much in the way of weight to the postage. They might make a difference in the thickness, but not certainly not in the weight. So just get all of these off. A little bit out of practice of uh, making a video, that's terrible. And then I wanna center this up onto the card. Now I'm, I'm just going to have to do it by eye. And there's a blue mark on that side. So we turn it over because there's always a second side to paper. I think that looks pretty good. That looks okay to me. Looks okay to me. There we go. So we've got that. Now we're going to prop that up again on some more dimensionals. Now this is see-through, so you want to be very careful that you're not putting your dimensionals on there. You might be able to fit a mini one there, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. But I wanted to just secure that as well. Just about to the end of this sheet, which is good. There, another one there, and I will put some little mini ones in there. I think I can probably fit one. Oops, sorry, I think I just bumped, bumped the camera. And maybe I get one there. So again, now I've got to peel them all off. 
<laughs> Don't worry, just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. Oops. And I lost a thumbnail. These are like acrylic nails. And I was on my way down to... Oh, actually, it was the class I did on Saturday. And as I shut the back door, it popped off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, now I've got to go out in public like that. So that's going to go up in that corner there like that. It's kind of over the ribbon, which is okay. I don't mind that. So I'm going to pop that up there like that. Just make sure that's straight-ish. Straight-ish. And you, before you pop that down, like really press hard, you have got a little bit of a minute to straighten it up. So now we can pop our flower on. It doesn't matter if we do it um, off, what is it, off, off side, whatever. No, that's soccer. I'm getting confused with soccer. Just never mind me. Okay, so we'll put a mini behind this side and we'll glue that on. We'll glue this one on to our sentiment label. So, dimensional on this side. So now it gives the illusion that there's something happening in the background. We'll pop another dimensional on here and put a little bit of glue on here take that protective paper off pop this one a bit like that and we've got our leaves to go in there as well we might pop this little one here by itself like that so I'll pop that right in the middle and just Yep, just a little bit of glue. Like, I mean, a little bit there. <gasps> Lucky. Lucky that wasn't on the card. A little bit like that. And we'll pop that one over the top. Leaves, a couple of leaves. We might pop this one going here. Just under there like that. And I'll just glue this end here. And just pop that under there. That way it's... I just bent that up a little bit. Just to give it a bit of extra movement. And we have another one here. Which we might pop in there. Beautiful. That's how quick and easy it is once you've got all your bits and pieces. And you can fiddle around with this. I mean, I could have added more leaves or whatever. But this is going to be just the right amount, I think. We've still got some jewels to put on there and I'm going to make a bow. So if, if you've never seen a bow being made, <laughs> hold onto your hat because here it comes. Look, I just do it with rabbit ears been doing it this way forever and it always seems to work for me so why change it why fix it if it ain't broke I think that's the saying isn't it right and I'm just going to trim that off and we might put that on a jaunty little angle <coughs> yeah I think I like that Okay, so we'll just give that a bit of a trim there, a bit of a trim there, and glue dot. That is the way you put a bow on a card these days, is a glue dot. So take the bow to the glue dot, and that is going to go right there, like that, I think. I like that 
And now I've got those beautiful gems. What did I do with them? That's the next question. What did I do with them? Here they are, right here. And these were the basic, uh, the rhinestone waves basic jewels. And there's a couple of different colours in here. <coughs> and I did write it down. Just bear with me for a second. Did I? Did I? Yes, I did. <coughs> They match Coastal Cabana, Knight of Navy, uh, and Pacific Point. So I'm going to use, I might use, and sometimes what I like to do is just take them out and just place them and see if that green's going to go with that green or if we're just going to go straight for the Knight of Navy. Kind of like a bit of touch of green under there. Anyway, let's play with that. My take your pick, still in my bag, so. Um, and look, you've got like three different, is it three different sizes or two? No, it's three different sizes, okay. So we might do a Knight of Navy, a tiny little one in the center of the flower. Oh, this would be so much easier if I had my take your pick with me. Pop that one in there. No, we'll just pop it in the big one, I think. Because I still want to see that mango melody. And we'll pop another small one. Oh, what do I normally use? Tweezers, I think. Sorry. I'll get it eventually. So we might pop one up here somewhere in the middle of that flower. Yep. Okay. There we go. Yay! Got some sparkle happening there. And we might use a big one down here. Big one down here. Yep. I think so. And we might just put another couple on the sentiment just to tie it all in. Look, there's a pretty one there. And a medium one over here, I think. And that's done. And I love this set. I just think it's so pretty. And the beautiful papers. Oh. I'll just, I'll have to show you all the beautiful papers. And of course they're double-sided. They're all double-sided. So look at these designs. So that's the one I just made there. Look at the back of that. That's great for the fellas in our life. Uh, here's another beautiful one, which is different again. And on the back of that one is this beautiful color. So you can see these backgrounds. They all mix and match. Here's another one. Just the two colours. And the back of that is the Mango Melody. Um, we've got this balmy blue one here. <coughs> Excuse me. And the back of that is the Shaded Spruce with the balmy blue. And I'm guessing... What would that be? It might be the Petal Pink. Yep, I think it is the petal pink. So that's beautiful. And here's a beautiful one here. I think I'll just pop this out, save myself the trouble of turning it around every five seconds. <coughs> so that's the Sweet Sorbet. That's one of the, the in colours that came in just last year. You've got a little touch of petal pink there and the back of it is the petal pink. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have... The background here is the shaded spruce again. So, like, you can see how you could mix and match those. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're going to match perfectly every time. That's why I like to get these, um, the sweet, because everything coordinates. And look at the back of that one. That's, that's the back of that one. And that matches with our embossing folder. 
How gorgeous is that? And that's in the balmy blue. I'm just going to have a drink. Sorry, guys. Um, so that's another beautiful one. But I love the dark um, night of navy background. I think it just makes the other colours pop. But that look at that beautiful blue and yellow. I mean, that's just classic, isn't it? And there's another night of navy background that you can use. All the they always give you like a, a theme on one side and then generic on the other side. So you've got plenty of choice. And like there's 48 sheets of paper in here. So yeah, you can be making cards till the cows come home. Oh, look at that one. That'd make a beautiful sky, night sky, wouldn't it, in the background? Lovely, lovely. There's that dark night of navy background again. And the green really pops from there. Oh, another stripe. Another stripe, that's really nice. Another sweet sorbet background. Oh, look, there's that beautiful textured design again in the, I'm going to call it wicker, wicker or basket weave, yeah, beautiful, 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 and here's one that you could use as a background or a standalone, another sky, that'd make a lovely winter sky, wouldn't it, it looks like snow falling, and oh, look at this one, that reminds me of a pair of jeans, you know, when they, you used to put that em, <laughs> embroidered patch on a hole or something, oh, and beautiful, Beautiful. You can't beat polka dot for plain, can you? Anyway, that is the new suite called the Regency, Regency Park Suite. You get the two stamp sets. You get the dies, so the two stamp sets. The pack of paper, which has got 48 six by six sheets in it. The two stamp sets that you can mix and match. You've got your wonderful dies. You've got your embossing folder and the punch and the gorgeous ribbon in one kit and there's one item number for that so when we can look inside the catalog I will show you that again and there's the card I've made um, for Margaret who's turning 80 um, this month so yeah that's a big celebration for her and I will finish off the inside of the card later but how easy was that to make a very, very special looking card with just a few elements um, and the blends that are so easy to colour? Look how that that's coloured. The ble Look, you saw me. It took two seconds and you've got this beautiful variation in colour. It's just, they're just so easy to use. I recommend them to anybody. Um, so, yeah, have a look at that um, when the new catalogue comes out, of course. But, yeah, there's another, an, a lovely card, and I'm so sorry that I haven't been able to post lately. But, yeah, I'm back in business. So um, in case I don't make another one before Christmas, I hope everybody has a lovely, happy and peaceful Christmas and New Year. And I will see you on the next video, whether it's before Christmas or not. Um, yeah, take care. And thank you so much um, for giving me the time to share that with you and if you do need any items there is my details again oh gosh everything's just sliding off now okay I'm going to say goodbye now okay have a great day bye